Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about a little bit of how MTG Finance has changed in time. And a lot of this comes down to Wizards of the Coast. Wizards of the Coast has changed a great bit since they printed the first Modern Masters. Now reprints are very common, they are expected, and they do really tank the price of a speculation. One of my favorite hobbies back a while ago was picking a card like Philia, collecting a bunch of them, and then seeing what happens. And that was a hobby. Like, I did not expect to make money, because if I did, that would be a terrible, uh, terrible way to make money. So, this still, you can still do it, it's just going to be a lot harder to do it, and there's a lot more risk. Now, reprints, as we saw from Battle Bond, they really do help a set's expected value. And if you didn't have all the really nice reprints in Battle Bond, no one would buy it. Now, you could say that about Conspiracy. Now, of course, we know that Masters, as well as the Spell Books, as well as many other products from the Vault, are 100% reprints. So there's no new design. And even though there's not many copies of it, uh, something like a Master Set can tank the price. Is it still worth speculating on? Yeah, uh, I, you always have a lot of fun and it's a, something that you can brag a little bit about with your friends. And yeah, as long as you're not arrogant about it or braggosis, you're good to go because it is one of the most fun things in this hobby that I personally think. There's nothing more rewarding than getting a card right and then getting that card right a hundred times over. Some things to avoid, uh, do not do not really buy these expensive cards. I would say do not buy or speculate in bulk on a card over $10. Uh, it is very likely that card over $10 will be reprinted at some time. Uh, even like a doubling season, which you might say, oh, that's a fantastic card. It's still going to be reprinted. Like after Battle Bond's over, maybe it gets a little expensive. And then two years from now, there's another reprint. Buy these kind of weird random cards like Goblin Goblin Lore, which if they do go up, you're going to be able to sell out of them and then make your money back and do it again. It is an incredibly fun hobby. I always like, as long as you break even, if you your goal in this hobby is to break even, you can still do it at this level. Uh, the buy list, when something goes up to a dollar, you can buy list it for a quarter or 50 cents, and depending what you bought into it at, that can funnel be funneled into your next speculation. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what you should be speculating on, like what type of cards. Now, these cards that I'm going to show you, it's already too late for them, but Oath of Ghouls, uh, Fanatic Effeat, um, Digger, the Bum, Chance Encounter, these coin flipping mechanics, that would have been a really great speculation because eventually they would have had a commander that based is uh, that would grow powerful whenever you won a coin flip. Therefore, something like Fnatic Feat, where you can flip as literally as many coins as you want, would be absolutely ideal for this new commander, right? Uh, the same with Chance Encounter, and the ability to flip two coins, and doubling your coin flips is also very good. So this is kind of a, an ideal type of speculation, and you might have to sit on it for many, many years. But you know eventually that the speculation will pay off because eventually all it takes is one card. I'm not talking about whole deck or whole, whole archetype. Uh, initially, the spike will be based on that one card, that one card with now the new ability. And I think this is a very good uh, example. And I wanted to hit on this example while it's still fresh. I talk about, about the Dark Depths example, uh, Dark Depths and Vampire Hexmaids. Before Vampire Hexmaids, Dark Depths was not a card. After Vampire Hexmaids, Dark Depths was a $40 card that even saw play in Legacy and Vintage. And all it takes is one card. If you look at a card and you're like, wow, this is very powerful. Uh, Dark Depths, uh, the card is, the problem is you have to pay 30 mana to remove your 10 ice counters on it 
and then it becomes a 2020 flying indestructible, which is great. Everyone needs a 2020 flying indestructible, but how do you remove those 10 counters? Well, at the time it did not exist, right? However, you can make the conclusion that yes, eventually a card much later, Dark Depths was Code Snap. Vampire Hex Mates, I believe, was, I want to say Zendikar. Yeah, it was Zendikar. Many, many years later, its corresponding combo came out. The same with these flipping cards. Like, eventually, you know that flipping coins would generate, all it takes is one new card to spike the price of every card that needs to flip a coin. So when you're looking at these new specs, I can't tell you what to spec on and what not to spec on because at the end of the day, if I said everyone should buy a Narwhal and we and let's say 1% of you went to buy Narwhals, that would be a terrible speculation because we have just artificially inflated the price of a Narwhal for no reason. Not because anyone thought that, oh, a card's going to come in. And that's kind of, I wanted to test that because Narwhals is, there's no combo piece. There's no reason anyone would ever speculate on a Narwhal. It's four mana, two and two blue homelands for a 2-2 first strike with protection from, I believe, red. It does not combo. There's no combo piece. But for something like Chance Encounter, it could be a combo piece for it eventually. And that's why you see a lot of these people taking... Um, you know, for every 10 major misses that you make... And remember, a major miss, worst case, you just sell it for bulk again, and you bought it for near bulk. Hitting on one of these feels really, really good. Um, it's just one of those things. Like uh, Ancestral Knowledge, as you guys know, I have many copies of that card, closing into 100. And I looked at it, and I said, yeah, this card might be worth something someday. And that's why I have so many copies of it. I have even more copies of something called Bounty of the Hunt from Alliance, because even when I was really going on magic was during the Alliance and Ice Age era because a lot of my friends were selling their collections and I was buying their collections and at the end of the day that's when the majority of my friends quit magic. So that was you know when they quit magic they don't even care. You're you're I think in middle school and you're just like, hey I don't I don't want to play this game anymore. Just take my cards, give me twenty bucks and we're good. <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately, I sold all of their collections to later on when I graduate high school, but uh, that's another story. So yeah, I mean, it, it's super fun, uh, super obvious, and at the end of the day, you can make a killing on these. Um, you don't even need to be good. You don't need to be very smart. You just need to be lucky, and that is the truth about MTG Finance. No matter how many paywalls that you pay for, no matter how many email chains, a lot of it is luck. Uh, and my best example, let's go all the way back to the beginning, is if you speculate on that card, that's not a bad spec. I, I know why people made the spec of because candles of Caballera is really, really expensive. Okay, why not have the creature version of it? Slightly worse, but maybe it would be, I mean, okay, we're infinite combos. But at the very end of the day, it can be reprinted. And so I would say two things. I would pick a card less than a dollar. You don't want to put too much money in it. And again, it's just for fun. And the second thing is the card absolutely has to be on a reserve list and or relatively old. So I actually think that some of these old cards are still undervalued today based on what their cards right next to them are valued. And especially these old cards with a lot of text uh, that has me like interested because sometimes like the text changes right they make it they simplify it and now the card is something that it wasn't in the past but yeah you have to lick your wombs and i think that's why i did my series when i was showing you my uh quote specs my bulk specs because you're not going to hit all the time and that's just Obviously, I can make it appear like I'm an awesome, and right, I just put all, I take all the bad cards from my binders, put all the really good cards in my binders, and now it seems like I'm a guru of some type. But you know, I'm a little too old for that. That's the young people's game when they tell you that, hey, this car, I own a whole set of beta, but I don't own a camera to sh take a picture of it for you, 
or I own a hundred black lotuses, but guess what? I have a potato camera and it looks like that I'm showing you Yu-Gi-Oh cards. <laughs> you know, I'll leave that for the younger YouTubers. <laughs> I'm a little too old for that. Anyway, bye guys.